Hey, this is Michael Sedini from Walk to Talk America. Hey, guys, this is Julie Golub with Team Smith & Wesson, and you're listening to the Armed Citizen Podcast. From the Ghost Tactical Production Studio, welcome to the Armed Citizen Podcast. And now your host, Trey Miller. Welcome to the Armor Citizen Podcast. I am your host, Trey Miller with Ghost Tactical Productions. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the 2A rally coming up and what it means for the 2020 election cycle. But before we get into that, you know, obviously if you're listening to this podcast, it means a couple of things. One, you're probably a 2A advocate and you like 2A content and you obviously like podcasts. And I want to thank you everyone for always supporting this podcast, but I want to invite you to listen to some other 2A podcasts out there that, that I personally listen to. We're going to go through some right here, and uh, most of them are on all of the podcast hosting sites, whether it's Podbean or iHeartRadio or Spotify, Apple uh, Podcast, Stitcher, all of them. The first one is a 2A is for Everyone podcast hosted by Tony Simon. We've got Gun Freedom Radio, hosted by our great friend Cheryl Todd. Riding Shotgun with Charlie, hosted by Charlie Cook. To the Republic Podcast, which is a new podcast, hosted by our good friend Timothy Knight and Rebecca Schmoey. And this is a great one. Like I said, it's a new one, but go check it out. Obviously, you've got Black Man with a Gun with the Reverend Ken Blanchard. The Concealed Carry Podcast with Riley Bowman. Clover Tech's got several podcasts you should check out. One of them is the Fire on Friday podcast. One of them is the After Hours. And then you have the Next Generation. All three of them are phenomenal. Go check those out. And once again, another new one is the Michael Sedini podcast, hosted by a guy that we we don't necessarily like to claim as a friend, but what the hell, Michael Sedini is a, is, is a good friend. So um, we want to say a, a quick shout-out to Michael. Um, last week... He was in Washington, D.C. for last Thursday and Friday, and he was asked by the White House to uh, sit on a committee to do with mental health awareness and all of that. So it's it's great to see that Michael Sedini and and Walk the Talk America are getting some accolades and getting some recognition because he and they are doing phenomenal work. So uh, keep up the great work and uh, keep fighting, Mike. We appreciate all you're doing for us. Now, getting back to the topic today, we're going to, like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming this weekend, the the 2A rally uh, this Saturday at 1230 at the West Lawn of the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., and and what it could mean possibly down the road. And and yes, the the rally itself is going to be huge. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be um, a, a great sight to see a lot of 2A activists and advocates uh, sharing the same soil in D.C. and, and showing that uh, our elected officials that we're serious and we mean business, so they, they're going to have to listen to us. But you know, a lot of people are making this out to be you know this this great event, and it is. It's going to be a great event. But I'm more worried about what happens November third. And um, you know, we talk a little bit about September 11th and how it was a tragic day. But all of us remember what our country was like September 12th. You know, everyone loving each other and, and helping each other out and, and having that American pride. And, and I'm hoping to see something like that on November 3rd as far as the motivation of the gun community, the gun culture, the two-way community to really kind of rally and utilize this rally as a starting point, not an ending point. Use it to be a starting point to get motivated about our rights and, you know, the 2020 election cycle, because we are. We're on the eve of the 2020 election cycle. And, you know, many of us in the community are, are kind of are worried about preserving our, our two-way rights. And, you know, there there seemingly is this never-ending battle to, you know, protect our right to keep and bear arms. And it always seems like this fight is an uphill battle. And, you know, one of the things that a lot of us always hear is, you know, why is it that we're always the ones that have to compromise? And and the reason why that seems that way is it seems to me we are the ones that are compromising. Every time that, um, you know, we don't see any progress on preserving our rights, we always see a little bit piece by piece being taken away. And, you know, we never see anything towards... Uh, national reciprocity getting passed, the Hearing Protection Act not getting passed. We've never seen anyone go after the NFA and the 4473 and 
we don't see that. All we see is people coming after piece by piece for our rights to keep and bear arms. And, you know, as much as I would like to think that external powers are working against us, you know, honestly, the truth is, is that we're to blame for most of this. Um, this is probably going to be an unpopular stance, but hear me out, guys. For a long, long time, for, for decades, you know, our community has basically sold our rights and protection to crooked organizations and politicians. Um, you know, unfortunately, this is not just a problem for the gun community. This is a problem we face in America as a whole, where I think people might get lazy and they they trust that their elected officials and all of that are, are going to do the work for them. We as citizens... You know, we've got enough on our plates as far as family and work and friends and all of that. So what have we done over time? Well, I mean, we've kind of given our elected representatives and these organizations we trust, we've given them basically uncontrollable power. You know, we send our money to these organizations like the NRA and, and entrust them to do our fighting for us. We kind of believe that they're going to have our best interests at heart and are going to continue to fight for our rights and our way of life. And, and the people that we elect to office, whether it's our sheriff or, or mayor, or city council, state senator, state representative, or at the national level with senator, representative, and, and ultimately president, you know, we elect these people, but ultimately we turn our heads and basically let them get manipulated by outside influences you know and i hate to say this but we, we've kind of become sheep and have blindly kind of followed shepherds that will probably in time become wolves i hope i haven't depressed everybody out there or pissed you off already but this is a conversation i think needs to be had but let's talk a little bit about what we can do we like to talk about this on podcasts on our live shows and in different videos all the time and and i love reading the comments and the emails and the live chats from the audience, because I know that there's still a lot of people out there that are still willing to stand up and fight. But the question is, what can we do? Well, guys, it's, it's honestly, it's time to take back our own rights. Instead of thoughtlessly believing that others will protect us and that they'll fight for us, I think it's time that we take control of our own rights. You know, our founding fathers of this amazing country dreamed of a society in a country founded on the principles of of the people by the people and for the people but over time we've lost track of this process and and really kind of given command of our rights and culture to a small group of quote unquote leaders our elected officials should not be our leaders they're our representatives. It is time that we take back the power and let our elected representatives know that our rights are not for sale. It's time to stop putting our faith in organizations to fight for our rights for us. We should be willing and able to stand up and can take control of this fight and show them that we as a people are willing to fight. Now, getting back to the 2020 elections. Guys, in case you haven't realized, the 2020 elections could be, I mean, for the gun culture, a really a, 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 an integral and defining moment for our way of life. Every day, there are new gun controls, bills being introduced at the federal and state level. You could say that our rights are, are literally under attack right now politically. Now, I'm not that person who thinks the sky is falling, and everyone that knows me knows that I try to stay positive. I try to make silver out of shit as much as possible. I'm also the one that believes that Second Amendment will never be revoked. With that being said, it is safe to say that the 2020 elections could go down as a very important election for gun rights. If the elections go a certain way at the national and state levels, the Second Amendment could look dramatically different in the years to come. So what I'm saying is, is anyone that's got a fight left in them, do not allow our rights to be sold to people who basically have complete disdain for our way of life. We need to make sure that we come across as constituents of these that say look we are regular people who have normal jobs that raise our families just like everyone else 
The only difference is that we believe that it is our duty and our responsibility to protect our families, our property, and ourselves from people who wish us harm. What we also need to do is educate people on what the 27 words of the Second Amendment truly means. It's not only about self-protection from evil. It's not about hunting and providing food. It's not only about shooting sports. The greatest idea of the Second Amendment that makes us different than every other country in the world is the idea that people being able to protect themselves from a tyrannical government. And why is this important? Because history has proven that the first step in controlling the people is to disarm them. Without a way to fight back against oppression, the people are literally at the mercy of what the government wishes to look like. The fact that our founding fathers saw that giving the people a way to fight back, that is still admired and revered by other countries today. But not just educating people about what the Second Amendment means, we need to re-educate ourselves. We need to re-read the Bill of Rights and figure out what that truly means to us as individuals. Then, at that point, if you feel strongly about America, then we need to find candidates that reflect our beliefs. Now, personally, I'm not a single-issue voter. My, my voting is not just about two-way rights. But they do play a very, very large role in my decision-making process when it comes to elections. Unfortunately, I think there's a lot of people that spend too much time worrying about the national or federal elections and not enough time thinking about the local and state elections. Guys, we need to make sure that the sheriff that you vote for aligns with your beliefs. Make sure that the city council and the mayor elections are just as important as the federal campaigns. And seriously, keep track of the state-level elections. The representatives that we elect at the state level will hold more power on our day-to-day lives than many people realize. They actually will probably hold more power than the federally elected officials that we vote in on our day-to-day lives. So how is this going to work? You know, that's that's really up to each individual, but I think that it's going to have to start from ourselves at the grassroots level. A grassroots action plan is really what it's going to take. Not waiting for our leaders and organizations to do the heavy lifting for us. We need to take control of our own lives and make sure the representatives understand that if they don't do their jobs, they won't have jobs. Let the organizations that only care about personal gain and power, let them know that they only have power because of the army of individuals that support them. If they want to keep that power, they need to earn our trust and continue to fight for the principles and the beliefs that people that support them believe in. Until we take back our own rights at a personal level, we will continue to slowly give them up piece by piece. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired. But the next 12 months are extremely crucial for our way of life. And if we don't get in the fight now, it may be too late. Remember who we are as Americans. Remember what our country was founded on. And most of all, remember that we hold the power. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Please leave any comments or questions you have in the comments below. Go check out all of those podcasts that I mentioned earlier, and we will talk to you soon. Semper Fi. Thanks for listening to the Armed Citizen Podcast. To check out our full lineup of pro-gun media content, including our product reviews, live shows, and other Second Amendment activity, please check out our website, www.ghosttacticalproductions.com.